Welcome to Artistic Adventures. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really cute box doll house for my petite Blythe. Let's get started. So in this video we're going to be talking about this box that I made and it could be a display box, a carrying case, or just a, something to show off your petite Blythe. And this is the petite Blythe. Uh, this is one of my newer ones that I haven't put in an outfit yet and I wanted to kind of walk you through how I made this and why I came up with it. Uh, this is by the way week two of this. I just went and had it checked and it looked it's looking good they say and uh, got a new cast put on. This is a cast actually hard as a rock. I got to pick the color though which I love wearing black so I got black. I may put some um, crystals on it like a bracelet. I think that would be cute. Uh, if you want to see what's underneath here I did take a picture of my hand. I didn't want to put it in the video but I'll post it on Instagram. I'll post other stuff over there and the link is in my uh, YouTube page. So I decided to make this little house for my petite Blythe and I think uh, now I'm actually going to end up selling these as a product on my Etsy site. I sell dolls there now and uh, don't want to, I don't really want to get into making doll clothes. It's just, I like it, but it's not something I want to like mass produce enough to, to sell. I like maybe doing it to sell on a doll or for my own dolls, but this was something that intrigues me. I just am intrigued with miniature things. I've, I've figured this out. <laughs> I, uh, started looking into doing this and one of the things I wanted to do was to add some things like on the shelf as you can see I have books and uh, a little doll and a little Bible and then I have the little teddy bear and so I was looking at um, different sites with miniatures and I found these I guess you probably you guys may have seen these you guys know as much about dolls as I do these are like the boxes of, it's not an actual doll in there, it's a it's a paper picture, but it's like a miniature Blythe. I don't know if you can see. Let me put them in my hand and I'll try to focus the camera. I'm not doing too good with my left hand, as you guys can tell. I did go back to work this week and uh, it was pretty much of a nightmare trying to type and write with my left hand. So let me see if I can focus on these a little bit better. Yeah, are they not the cutest little things you've ever seen? Mm. Yeah, so I thought I'd use those maybe if I if I start making these and then um, I can like set this up on the shelf like a doll or you know somewhere. They're all going to be different. They're not going to be the same. And I, did, I still have a few things to do to this one. I um, may, uh, I think I'm going to put a picture up. I'm not sure about this particular one. This is uh, a painting, of, like it's a reproduction of a, a master's work. But it's small, but I don't know. I want to put something else in there. That might work. Hmm, I might use that. And then I want to put a, a pet, like here won't be this one because this goes with another poodle that I have that's larger. Or I could put like a little potted plant. I don't know. What do you guys think? I kind of like that she might have a little pet. So what I'm going to do, we're going to try to do this uh, in a different way because of my disability here. I'm going to bring my computer and set it up. And I'm going to show you pictures that I made while I was making this in the process that I went through uh, before I had the surgery. So... Let me go grab my computer, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my pictures pulled up on the computer, so uh, bear with me. This is really about the only way I could do it. I was going to just download them into the video editing software, but it just was really painful with me trying to work with my hands to do that. So I think uh, you can see this pretty well. Um, and I'll go through them somewhere in the middle. They start to get out of order, but we'll deal with it. Okay, we'll talk about it. 
So I started out with a box that I bought from Michaels and actually ended up taking buying two boxes and I put the two big halves together because I wanted to have a room on both sides of the box. So this was how it looked when I first got it. It's unfinished. And uh, then I took all the hardware off and I cut out of a thin piece of wood this design for that's going to be the front of the bedroom area. And then I made a little drawer to stick into the bottom of that so there could be a little bit of a storage space. And I'll show you more about that later once we get through all the videos. Okay, so once I had them all painted, I put a couple of these little blocks in and glued them in. This one right here that I'm pointing at uh, in the picture is where I'm going to set the board for the bed that'll be behind that decorative board. And then these board, these little small things are for to put the front into so it won't you know go all the way back it'll it'll rest on those but it'll be flush with the outside so that was the next thing and you see I've got the little board right here in my uh, I don't know that I plan to have it in the picture but it is the bed board and that's where the little mattress will rest okay so I didn't paint the backs because I'm going to put wallpaper in yeah wallpaper so that's how it looked with it opened after I painted it both front and back and this is after I put the board in for the bed. And uh, here again I'm showing the little pieces that I glued in to uh, allow the front piece to go in and, and rest against those. And I'll put glue on those and then I'll press that, that front piece, decorative piece, in so that it's flush with the outer part of the box. And there it is after I've put it in. And so you've got the little bed uh, board in there and then the opening for the drawer. So I found this uh, paper that I'm going to use to be the wallpaper. And uh, put that whole wall to be wallpaper. That's going to be the little living room. And then I cut this piece out to go back behind the bed. You could have actually put the whole piece in there before you glued it. But, you know, I glued it before I thought about it. So we're going to put the small piece in. <laughs> There you go, having another adventure, right? So anyway, we've got the enough there because you're not going to see it really behind the bed. All right, so that's how it looks so far. Then I glued the little pieces of the drawer together, painted the front of the drawer, and also I did end up putting, uh, let me go back here. There's another picture. Some of these are out of uh, order, but I did put a piece of the wallpaper in the bottom of the box of the drawer. So I'll show you that a little bit later. Now to make the handle, I used two beads. I had these two turquoise beads. It had a fairly large opening and a piece of green wire. And I just bent the wire like that in a U shape. And then I just glued them onto the front. You could actually put two holes through the wood and put the wire through and all that. Uh, but I didn't do it. I, you know, this, this is a Z6000, guys. It really holds well, right? <laughs> Okay, so now I cut a piece of cardboard to fit inside on top of the bed, and that's going to be the bottom of our mattress. So I took that cardboard and measured out a piece of fabric uh, coordinating with the color scheme here to that's big enough that I can uh, build it up and put some fluffy stuff under it. And there's me putting the paper in the drawer. I don't know how these pictures got so out of whack. And it, there's how it looked. All right, and I'm putting the little drawer into the opening that I cut. And that's how that looks with the little drawer in. All right, so now I'm starting to build up the furniture. And I, made, I just made some boxes out of um, cardboard scraps that I had from items that I bought that were, you know, packaged in, in, in a thick card stock. And one is for the bottom of the chair, one's for the, the footstool. And then I had this... Uh, tiny Persian rug that I had bought back when I did the diorama. If you saw that video, you will recognize that. And uh, what I'm going to do is cut out a piece of that to go down on the floor so that it'll look like a rug or carpet. And there I have it cut out. Actually, I used a different color because I thought the red didn't go well with this. So anyway, I cut it out. I put fray chuck around the edges 
and then I glued it down onto the bottom of the living room floor. So you got a little um, rock there. Yeah, looks cool. All right, now I took a small child sweater that I found at a thrift stop, thrift, thrift shop. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink, drink of water. Mm. And what I did is I uh, put the fray check around on the edges of the area that I thought I would use to make a little blanket for the bed. And I based that on basically the size of the mattress bottom that I'm going to be using. I ended up actually cutting it down some more afterwards because it, it was just too big and bulky to go in there. Uh, and here's the chair and ottoman with his little pillow. And I have some shots later that I think will show more about how I made that. And there's the little bed. Um, the ribbons, I will show you later when we go back live on video, that um, they are for tying the doll into the bed if you want to use it as a carrying case. And the ribbon goes under the mattress. And that's the little mattress and bed with the matching color-coordinated pillows that I made to go with it. And that's how it looked as a finished product with a little teddy bear in there. Okay, now I needed to make a little table to go in the corner of this living room. So I took my thin wood that I have and I cut out a circle to be the top. And then I carved that out. I actually carved that out with the X-Acto knife. And then I had another piece of this wood that I'm going to use as the bottom, as the uh, stand of it. And then I cut these pieces out. They're going to go on each of the four sides of the wood to be the part of the stand. And after I got them glued, I did cut out some parts of the front of it to make it more decorative. So you see how that was after I just had glued it. And oh, there's one picture of where I had tea with my adopted mother on Mother for well, it was the week before Mother's Day because I had my arm in a cast. How that got in there? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, and here's the, I made a little shelf to go behind the bed, and I just used little pieces of wood and glued them to a bigger piece, and I, I went back after the glue dried and carved out some of that also to make it more decorative. And here's a picture of that table that I, I made. You can see how I carved out pieces of the leg to make it look more decorative. I painted it brown with acrylic paint and then put a little bit of uh, high gloss varnish on it and let it dry. And I thought it turned out pretty cute. So I put that in the corner, and the lamp is something that I purchased as at a, at a miniature store. You could put anything on there, a vase with flowers. It's lots of things we can do with this. That's why I'm kind of loving it. I like to be doing different things. Oh, how did we get back here? Okay, this is back at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's the shelf where I cut out the front part to make it look a little bit better than just a plain block of wood and I sanded it and, and painted it pink that'll probably come up later I did add a little strip of wood I don't know if you can tell across the top of this because the hooks that I have here the eye hooks to screw them in it would have gone through the thickness of this so I put a strip of wood just across the front for these and you know then painted it and then I drilled a hole and put the eye hooks in so that they just come to the bottom of the wood and don't go completely through and that's what I'll hook the handle to. Here's where I put the I painted the little shelf that I made pink and put it up just used glue to stick it up in the bedroom over the bed and I just used some decorative beads uh, that made it look really pretty very uh, kind of ornate bead there at the at the top and that's what the handle will look like so that people can actually use this as a carrying case as well and that's kind of looks like the finished product but I know there's oh I guess that's it all right well let's go back to the box itself hang with me while I get rid of the computer and pull this back out and refocus the camera. Okay. So, as you can see, yeah, there's the handle. 
and um, afterwards I did add this mirror. I cut this out of paper and put a cardstock behind it. I wanted to have something that said home sweet home and that's what it says. You probably can't tell in the in the video so far away. I have the little um, table here. I glued the lamp down and then I found this little decorative jar and glued that down. These are also glued down. These are glued down and what I did is I made um, I sewed these at the corners to make it like a box and then I put the like some fiber fill on top of the box, the cardboard, slipped this down over it and then glued it at the bottom put some ribbon trim around that. Same thing here and then this I made uh, cardboard the shape of the back put the fiber fill on one side slipped the, or actually I slipped the uh, cover over it then put the fiber fill on one side and glued it to the back of the uh, seat part. And this pillow is actually loose so I wanted some of the elements you know to be able to take out some of them I didn't uh, for instance, up here you have these books, they're glued, the little doll is glued, and the little Bible is glued. You can always put different things up there, you know, depending on what you want in your room. I did make this little pillow to match the trim on the blanket, and these decorative pillows come out. The little bear comes out, and the, the blanket comes out. So you have your little mattress here, and so what I thought would work is if you want to use this as a carry case, then you don't want your, your doll moving around. So you could put the doll in the bed, with or without the covers, and imagine that you have two hands that work. <laughs> And then you can tie your doll down, and I would tie it in a bow, but, you know, that would be really not fun to watch for you guys or, or for me to do. So anyway, imagine she's tied down with that, and then let's say you want to put your movable parts away, you could store those in this little drawer, like that. How cute is that? You can just put them in the little drawer. And then close the drawer. Take your your blanket and fold it. Close it up. It latches, and you've got your little dollhouse room display case, whatever you want. So, uh, like I said, there's lots of ways to make this different. That's just how I did it and how I imagined it could be most useful. Uh, either, you know, a child could play with it or an adult could use it who's, who's a collector. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hope you give me a thumbs up. hope your thumb is not encased in a cast like mine. <laughs> and uh, come back next week. We'll be having another video. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, and bye.